So you helped me redesign my website. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. And I'm in the process of adding new illustrations to the online gallery. It looks good so far. Thanks. One of them, this Halloween image, I used Clip Studio Paint to create. Oh, okay. I recorded my process, so I figured I'd just go over that with you. Awesome. First thing I did was block in my layout using the perspective rulers. I had a vague idea of what I wanted, so I just kept at it with the blue pencil until I liked what I saw. And now you're blocking in the figures. Yeah, exactly. And again, I just have a general idea of the story I want to tell. A kid trick-or-treating with his ghost friend. Yes, the ghost girl from my Halloween moon book. Oh, yeah. You'll see as I'm working this out, I initially drew the ghost's trail off to the right. Mm -hmm. But I thought compositionally that it pulled your eye right off the page. So I ended up changing that, and I'll show you a little later how that worked out. I also messed around with the cat's pose just a little. All right, so this next stage I would call my roughs. They aren't my finished pencils, the pencils you'll see in the final, mm. but I do try to get them as tight as I can so I get a better feel for the piece. Couldn't you do that with the actual pencils? I could, yeah, but at, at, at this stage, actually, even though I think my composition is pretty well set, uh, the ideas are still pretty rough in my head, so there's a lot of erasing and shortcuts, and I, I really want to have my finished pencils look finished. Okay. Also, with the finished pencils, I'll probably take more time to finesse the lines just a bit. You know, thick and thin, mm -hmm. light and dark, hatching, that kind of stuff. So now, these are your final pencils. Yes. Don't jump down my throat, but these finished pencils look shockingly similar uh, to the rough pencils. Am I missing little... something? Do I, not I mean, I, I, apparently I nailed it with the cat roughs. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is clearly a poor example, yeah. but it, it's, I think it's the only part I recorded of this. All right. Oh, but I did record this. You see how I changed the ghost trail to be more dramatic mm. and lead you into the composition from the left side of the picture? Yeah, I like that. And you can see here, I'm using the curve rulers to trace the outlines of my sketch mm -hmm. so that when I lay down the finished pencils, they'll be relatively smooth and not too sketchy. I would love to go trick-or-treating with a ghost on Halloween. Well, that's the night that they say that the barrier between worlds is lifted. Oh, yeah. So you've probably been trick-or-treating with ghosts since your first Halloween. Since my first Halloween? Uh, I mean, it's possible. Huh. You just broke my brain. Uh-huh. I wonder if anybody listening mm. has seen a real ghost on Halloween. Yeah. Well, if they have, I, I hope they comment. Yeah. And confirm that I'm right. <laughs> All right, let me just run through what I was thinking for composition. Uh, I, I didn't do this ahead of time okay. formally, which mm. maybe I should have, uh, but I kind of have these things in my head subconsciously uh, as I'm sketching it out. The rule of thirds is one method of placing objects of interest in a composition. Right. Divide the paper into thirds vertically and horizontally, and then place important elements where the lines intersect. Okay, looks like you did that. Yeah, you want people to notice the scared homeowners, the ghost, the candy. Mm -hmm. That's the story of the illustration. Right. The people were so scared of the ghost, yeah. they just dumped all their candy out and shut the door. Yeah, so we got that. And also, in just a more basic sense, uh, I try to use other objects in the image to lead the eye toward the focal point, toward the thing that I want you to focus on when you look at the image. And that's the boy and his ghost friend. Exactly. And, and I didn't set this up like a machine beforehand, and I'm sure that it's imperfect, but I just try to direct the viewer's eye as I'm sketching things out, and I hope that it works out to help tell the story. In this case, I think it does. Oh yeah, it works. All right, some color. Yeah, now this is a cool October night, obviously. Mm -hmm. It's Halloween, uh, and it's dark out. These kids 
don't have to knock off at six. Right? I'll say, though, as a candy giver outer, I appreciate the two-hour limit. I guess. But I remember trick-or-treating till eight or nine when yeah, I was a kid. really late. And that just seems right. Yeah, you keep going until your legs give out mm -hmm. or everyone turns off their porch light. Yes. It's a social contract. Right. You shouldn't mess with that, <laughs> local government. <laughs> Okay, my color choices are based on my two light sources. Okay. There's the ambient bluish light of the moon, which casts everything in a cooler light. Mm -hmm. But there's also the porch light, and that light is throwing more intense lighting. Ah. It's casting the shadows on the ground. Uh, it's making some of the objects close to it glow with that warm yellow light. The story of your first Halloween. Oh. still distresses me. Oh, it still distresses me. <laughs> I was, I think I was three or four, and this is the first one I remember. Okay. I was dressed as a clown, homemade costume. Mm. My parents took my brothers and me out, and we were just on my street. We were little. Yeah. But look, if someone tells you all you have to do is ring a doorbell, mm. say trick or treat, mm -hmm. and you get candy, yeah. you're going to want to do that as many times as possible before it's bedtime. Right? Right. So because of that, I was practically sprinting down the street. My parents were doing a decent job keeping up. Slow down, Vincent! But you know what? They they also had to wrangle my younger brother. So it, it, it slowed them down. Right. And then it happened. I, I, got, I got to a house before they uh. did. I didn't realize that they weren't right behind me. Mm. And I rang the bell. I hate this part. <laughs> I feel like if this were a movie, I'd be yelling at the screen. It still <laughs> makes me uncomfortable to think about it. Yeah. So I, I ring the bell. And an old couple opens the door. Uh-huh. Trick or treat, I say. And they say, oh, a little clown. Come on in. <laughs> and, you know, I was a very courteous young man. <laughs> so I did what I was told. I walked into their house alone. Oh, God. And then they closed the door behind me. Jeez. <laughs> so I, they placed me in the center of their living room, mm. this dark little living room, and they are just standing there looking at me. And I'm thinking you know, where's the candy? I want the candy. Right? You were just trying to figure out why it wasn't working the way it should. It has worked so far, but right. not now. So then the old man says, well, do a trick. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do a trick, he says. And I'm standing there in silence. Like, I'm starting to feel a little nervous. Like, yeah. I might cry nervous. <laughs> right. And then the old lady says, you said trick or treat. If you want a treat, you have to do a trick. I feel confident this is why you are so twisted. <laughs> <laughs> it might be. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But I was really, I was honestly scared at this point. Oh, yeah. Because first, I'm four. Mm -hmm. uh, second, I have no idea who these people are. Right. I've never seen them before. Yes. I have no idea where my parents went. Yeah. And now they want me to uh, perform a trick. Now you'd be like, let me do a number. Let me just sing a little something for you. <laughs> but back then. <laughs> yeah, back then I was a wreck. <sighs> so I, I stammered, m m m my, my parents are coming here. Oh, and the couple, this is their reaction, they start laughing. Oh. <laughs> and I am about to lose my mind. My God. And just then, the doorbell rings again, uh. and the old couple opens the door, and there are my parents. Thank uh. And I scream, Dad! <laughs> and the couple just keeps laughing. Oh, no. And my parents come in, and my dad says, You all right? You got away from us. Uh. And the old couple is like, Ha, 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 ha. We're just having some fun. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> They got away with it. They did get away with it. Who knows it. how many kids that old couple has eaten over the years. Seriously. And I was a scrumptious morsel back then. <laughs> no. Chubby little kid full of candy. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> I'd have made a very tasty dessert. <laughs> All right. The last thing I did was throw a levels adjustment layer on this thing to deepen the darks, intensify the color a bit. Mm -hmm. And you can see the difference when it's off, on. Oh, yeah. Off, on. And I'll call that done. Okay, let's zoom in and take a look at it. You know, Michelle, mm -hmm. on All Hallows' Eve, when the veil between the worlds of the living and the dead is at its thinnest, yeah. they say the dead may commune with the living, mm -hmm. and a great wealth of secrets may be shared. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Right? What kind of secrets? Oh, wait. Is that... I can't believe I'm just seeing this. 
Is that the old couple that freaked you out <laughs> on your first Halloween? Uh, is this you getting revenge? Know. Oh my god, revenge. how did I not see I mean, this? It may have been subconscious. Oh, subconscious. It's subconscious. <laughs> hey, look, they asked for a trick. Yes. This is my trick. Yeah. I bring the dead to their door. Jeez. <laughs> if you want to see another Halloween trick, you can watch me stumble through this pumpkin head scarecrow I did last year that didn't turn out too bad. Yeah. You know, we should look up that old couple. Oh. See if they remember terrorizing children. <laughs> yeah, but you were four. How old would they You're be right. now? Let me do the... 212. <laughs> <Yes>. Roughly. 